Good morning, and welcome to the session of the build side of an Android uh, app. By the way, how many of us are Android developers? Okay, good. So we are in the right place. So, uh, some background. As you can guess, the build is the most uh, requested feature, which is asked uh, by uh, developers. In the last uh, couple of years, uh, we have been working with uh, quite a few companies uh, to help them to improve their build times uh, with uh, Gradle. And in this session, we would love to share with you the best practices, stuff that worked, and uh, some uh, mistakes that we have done in order for you to avoid them. Yeah. So here's the problem. Can you guess what's the problem? Let's see. Audience? What? Okay, good guess. So let's think of it this way. Uh, we all add the new features, libraries, frameworks. We refactor it code to a smaller classes. We add tests. We all love testing. And as the audience here says, yeah, the build times um, somehow add up. And here's the problem. Basically, when we design or develop uh, our Android uh, app, we don't think about the build as a design uh, component. And actually, we should. And uh, this talk is uh, to justify and to explain uh, why. And yeah, the, the build process and build in general is not something easy. Because, uh, you know, analyzing build uh, takes time. Uh, it's difficult uh, to estimate and prioritize uh, build tasks. And here, uh, the fun part. The build improvement uh, might be ambiguous. Based on my experience, there is no uh, silver bullet that you can apply, boom, and everything uh, works uh, great. Some stuff uh, that was uh, beneficial uh, to one type of project, projects was not beneficial to the other type. And this is why, uh, as we're going uh, to describe in the next slide, we always, as Android developers, need to be cautious and mindful when we do this uh, stuff, so we can focus on right uh, things. So in this talk, uh, we are going to share with you uh, the patterns, how to improve uh, your build uh, from the easy to interesting, from uh, build tools versions, hardware, and modularization. And essentially, the process or the approach that worked for us is uh, creating a test project or creating a large test project with Android Studio Poet that we are going to introduce, uh, implement a suggestion what we think uh, could be useful, test and measure using a Gradle profiler, and once uh, we are happy with the improvement, then we can uh, implement it within a real uh, project. How did we do it? Uh, using a Gradle profiler, uh, we changed a Java or a Kotlin file, and uh, we ran and uh, tested the assemble uh, debug. Okay. Uh, let's start with um, build tools version. In order to convince you to always keep your build tools up to date, uh, we generated a project with um, hundreds of thousands of methods, and then um, we built it with different versions of Gradle, Android Gradle plugin, and Kotlin, available at different point in time, starting from November last year till now. And um, the results are quite good, just by in, um, Fixing and uh, improving, incrementing the build time, sorry, uh, by incremental the version of your build tools, the build speed was twice as fast as before. Without doing anything additional, just by using the great work that was done by JetBrains and uh, Gradle and Google. There is another thing that's related to build tools, and to show that, we again generated a project profiled it with a build scan, and took a look into it. Uh, compilation took only about a third time, while the DAXing 
took more than a half. Obviously, this ratio differs on the project, but still, DEXing takes a significant amount of time. And for those of you, for those of you who don't know, DEXing is a process of taking Java.class files and turning them into the DEX. This is a rather slow and complicated process, especially when you have multiple DEX files. But uh, starting from API 21, there is a native support for multi-DEX. So this process gets, got way much faster if you will use um, MinSDK 21. So on the very same project, with API 21, build time got 30% faster. This is really easy win. You just make a flavor, and it works. If your app uh, supports early versions, you can still benefit from it. Next thing is the hardware. Again, we generated a project, half Kotlin, half Java, with uh, 200,000 methods, and we profiled it on the old, rather old three-year-old MacBook Pro um, and on the um, latest one. As you can see, the new MacBook Pro has faster CPU, more cores, and faster RAM. And after profiling, we've seen that on the one module configuration, the build time got three times faster, right. really just by replacing the laptops. On the modularized project with 10 modules, the gain were less, but still it got twice as fast. Um, the interesting thing here is that, at least on this particular project, the replacing hardware did a better job of improving your build speed than modularization. On the new laptop, it was 20 seconds. Modularized project on the old one was 30. The whole process of profiling this thing was not that easy, at least not that straightforward, because when I just got my new laptop, this was something that I expected, that I will just run it and get the benefit. The actual results were quite confusing. On the new laptop, with better hardware, it was slower. It appeared that um, antivirus consumed about 80% of the CPU. It was checking all the intermediate files in the build folder, and that was, was slowing us down. After fixing it, we got what we expected. So please keep in mind that watching Netflix, YouTube, building something in parallel can dramatically reduce a build speed. For us, fixing antivirus speed up our build three times. Now let's go to the hard stuff, materialization. Materialization is basically, as we all know, a process of um, taking a big one module app and splitting it into multiple modules. There are three things why it can help us. First is parallelization. Independent modules can be built by Gradle in parallel, therefore the build is faster. Next thing is caching. If, for example, on the, for the right configuration, we'll change third module, we don't need to recompile the first and the second one. Let's go to compile faster build. The third thing is compile avoidance. Um, what is it? If you will take a, mo a body of a method in the feature module and you will change it without changing public interface of the class, Gradle will guess that it doesn't need to recompile the app at all, and therefore, you only need to compile um, the feature module, and that speed up the build. If you will add, for example, a public method, it will be a bit slower. Obviously, this is not something that you can control, because if you need to add public method, you just set it, but it's still nice to have it. So the whole modularization thing, how to approach it. We believe that the first thing that uh, you should do is obviously extract code that you don't change a lot. Because if uh, right now you, for the right configuration, you will change the app module and assemble the whole um, part, the whole project, uh, it'll be faster. In our case, uh, we split up in half, and the gain was about 20, 30%. There is another side to this split is that if you write enough tests for utility modules, then you don't, basically don't need to compile app module at all. You can work against tests, for example, if you do TDD. In this case, the gain was 
about 50%. Again, the modules are equal size. So you might notice that the build time for uh, library module is uh, a bit fast. It's faster than uh, for the application module. That's related to DEX, so there is n no magic behind it. In another thing that you always need to keep in mind when you do modularization is intermodial dependencies. Because if for the right configuration you will change the feature 3, now you will have to recompile feature 2 as well. That adds a little bit of time, not much, but as the app grows, we, the amount of module increases, and these small things um, can uh, slow you down. So you might need to think about how your intermodal dependency structure works. So we would recommend you to start simple, extracting things that um, you rarely change, like utilities, core UI components, network, maybe tracking infrastructure. And only then start extracting features. Because in this case, you'll always benefit from the uh, materialization and you won't end up with increased build time. Because, for example, you, when you work, you need to change two modules instead of one. There is, although, um, the bad side to this thing. Um, if you're still at the stage one when you're extracting the code into, ready change code into separate modules, your colleagues will probably add code to the app because obviously they need to develop feature and release them. And if you don't have dedicated people, there is pretty much nothing you can do about it. You can just, you have to just live with it. But if you do have time, you can get a little bit more creative. For example, um, you can extract all your app code into the library module, at least most of it. Yes, that will reduce a, bi a little bit the build time, but you'll get other sorts of benefits. It will be way easier to extract feature between the monolith uh, module and the app because feature can depend on all the core components that you use and everything, even though they're not extracted. For the left configuration, it will be much harder. And if you don't, again, have dedicated time or people who work on it and make sure that this will be done, you might end up with extracting half feature and then move on to the next project. That's probably not something that you want to. Another small benefit here is that if you were working against the feature, it'll be faster on the um, right configuration. So to recap, we do recommend you extract utilities and rarely change modules. Please keep in mind that intermodule dependencies add to the build time. Not much, but again, our projects are rather big. If you're working against tests, for example, in TDD way, that's great. And please, we really recommend you to measure on the test project first, because in test projects, it's much easier to um, track an issue and fix them. Because for example, we didn't cover things like flavors and uh, other things that can really impact your build, because there are a lot of variables to it. Cool. So uh, to recap, or at least uh, to make sure we are all alive, here's our uh, process, which is we have a create a test project that we are going uh, to talk in a moment, implement suggestion, test and measure using Gradle Profiler, and finally, if you are happy with the outcome, implement within a real project. Now the fun stuff. I guess all of you are uh, thinking the following thoughts at the moment. You know, these guys showed us a nice uh, something with a nice uh, numbers. But you know, all of us have uh, their own real life projects uh, to work uh, tomorrow. And here is our solution to help you with that. Meaning, we want to introduce Android Studio Poet, a tool, uh, or basically a library that we use to generate uh, the sample projects, and show you how you can mimic and synthesize a project, uh, a test project, which, is, which has the similar 
uh, configurations as uh, your own app. So let's see. Which essentially, Android Studio Poet is an open source uh, project. It is hosted here uh, on a GitHub. And here is the link. Uh, uh, here you can find uh, a nice uh, UI, which we show in a moment. Uh, all the features, kind of a grocery store. Uh, configure a number of modules, packages, classes, uh, how to download, uh, command line arguments, how to run it, and all the cool things. And uh, essentially what does it do? It accepts a JSON file, such as here. Don't, uh, don't worry if you don't understand it all now. It's a lot of details. As your Android app has a lot of details. So we got here the config, for instance, uh, compact, which is a JSON file. And I'm not sure I have an internet here, which is another problem. Okay. Oh. Just a sec. Oh, it opens. Surprise. Uh, so uh, this is the samplest uh, config. So you can see the project name, Android Gradle plugin version. That could be super useful. So if you want uh, to, basically, as Nikita said, when you need to migrate, then you can test uh, the advantage with the latest and greatest uh, plugin version. Uh, number of modules, number of methods, Java code, Kotlin code, product flavor, flavors, dependencies, build types, and of course tests, as we all love testing. So this is the all features that uh, Android uh, Studio Poet supports. Uh, please note, basically, the way we wrote it is to make sure that all the important features that affect uh, the build time are there. So for example, uh, how many of us are using Kotlin in their app? Cool. So we can uh, do a mix of a uh, Java Kotlin project, packages, classes we discussed, methods, fields, intermodule dependencies, which is pretty important, uh, external uh, libraries, uh, Gradle plugins, uh, external uh, repositories such as Sonotype, uh, Maven, build tools, versioning, strings, images, or other cool things from Android. Uh, the butter knife is in yellow because uh, we are working uh, to support it. And uh, we also got uh, data binding in. As we said, there are two uh, input uh, formats. The full format is uh, the one that we discussed. Well, uh, uh, or basically, the compact uh, format is the one that we discussed, the easy one. And there is a full format where you definitely need to spend a little uh, time more to make sure that you know how to mimic uh, your uh, project. Demo. So how to use Sport? Like many other things in life, easy. Here I'm just out of laziness, open it in uh, IntelliJ, but it uh, also can be opened from the command line. Let's hope it works. Cool. So this is the UI. Here is just a JSON uh, within a text. So uh, you can uh, go here and uh, change things. It's uh, basically the same uh, config uh, format uh, the full, uh, for, uh, sorry, the compact uh, format uh, from the GitHub. And of course, the best UI has only one button, generate. And done. So just a sec. We can see here a nice uh, dump of everything that it's uh, generated. As you can note, it's pretty fast, as we invested a lot uh, to make sure that uh, Generating a project uh, is a fast uh, move. As think of it, uh, in many test cases, uh, you can uh, you need to generate a lot of uh, configs. And here is the result. I just open it in a commander. And where did I put it? Just a sec. You see, this is the, the project. I generated the Android Studio project. As you can check, this is the project name from here. And I click in. 
And we have a nice uh, look of uh, an Android uh, Studio project. And as you can see, Android Studio Poet essentially generated everything here. Uh, let me see, from uh, Gradle file. Sorry, not this one. Build.gradle. All this code is generated. And then uh, and it's buildable. So uh, it's a valid Android code. Uh, just for uh, fun, because we all uh, love uh, graphical representation of our dependencies, here is the dump of uh, modules uh, with its colors. The colors I don't remember. It's by uh, Gradle uh, definition, you know, Java project in one color, Android project in another color. So we got a visual uh, representation of what's uh, going on. So for instance, uh, this project is the, depends on uh, this project. Uh, here is the code for uh, Android app module. We got a builder Gradle with a lot of cool things. So for instance, uh, you see the dependencies with the implementation. Uh, we got uh, dependencies to the support library, constraint layout, JUnit. As we said, we all have testing. Uh, also, if you don't believe me, here is the mix of uh, Kotlin and Java. And if we go under the sources, at least hopefully, main Java. So here is the gener generated uh, Java code, which is essentially methods uh, calling each other in chain. And we are thinking how uh, to make it a little bit more uh, real life uh, scenario. And let's see the Kotlin code. And this is a valid uh, Kotlin code, even with the custom annotation. And also so far the methods are calling themselves in a chain. And uh, all the rest uh, of uh, interesting uh, Android artifacts, uh, let's say manifest. Sec. I don't know about you, but for me it looks a valid uh, Android uh, manifest XML file with activity. And by the way, uh, the result application you can actually run uh, on your phone if you want to. It just uh, showed a screen with a random generated your image. Great. Let's get back to the slides. So uh, we are approaching to the end, and if you would like to learn more, here is a bunch of uh, links that could be useful for you. Just for this talk, we made about uh, 50 config files and uh, run and profiled more than uh, uh, 500 uh, builds. Of course, you can find uh, all our configs used for this presentation here with uh, their uh, project. So you are welcome to take a look to see how the stuff that we did uh, is different from your uh, project or uh, uh, real life uh, app, and see what can be changed so can you uh, so you can easily uh, reproduce uh, your own app. Thanks again for being with us, and it's also time to say thanks to a lot of people who helped us to get where we are, which is uh, Sergio from Google, one of the core developers, and uh, Stefan, uh, who delivered uh, just a talk uh, about this subject before us from uh, Gradle.